Hello, good evening, welcome to Sunday Night Trucking. How are we all doing? Can we have an AV check to get us going here? It looks like things are working, so I hope you can hear me. Hopefully I didn't welcome have an back. unplugged microphone cable welcome. this time. Nice jacket. It's just a, it's just a Twitch one. <laughs> How are we all doing? I'm actually not hungover, I'll come to that one. Sorry about uh, the, the late stream, or later than planned, shall we say. I uh, hope you're all doing well. Oh boy, the resubs. How was the simulator in Cosford? Which one, Zantaus? Zintaus, I should say. Happy anniversary. Not hungover, no, just very tired. <laughs> No, well, I was drinking till like half past 12, 1 o'clock. Yeah, I was doing that, of course. Where's the wheel cam? He'll be on shortly when we drive. Calm down. Uh, Shaman, welcome back. Craziest treble. Thank you for 10. Mr. Roadrunner, thank you for 15. Loving the content. Thank you. Group here, thank you for 9. Happy anniversary. SND, thank you for 17. Uh, Mipmap. Thank you for 31. Jack Attack, thank you for 9. Mr. Hammy Hermy, welcome to the net house, sir. God, gotta love that excessive deodorant. <laughs> Matt Man, thank you for 3 years, mate. Happy anniversary. Dan Hall, welcome back. Heroic Spartan, thank you for 13. I smell shenanigans with my sub. Uh, heroic uh, Alcinor, thank you for 5. Kilmowski with 41, double sub hype. Heron with 46, PC Tech with 59. Uh, you're welcome, PC Tech. Thank you, mate. Thank you. T Vale, thank you for 41. And Codion. Welcome, welcome back. <laughs> um, now, the, the honeycomb stick. I already have a honeycomb stick. I already have the honeycomb stick from um, to the nut house. from the Flight Sim Expo. Flight Sim Expo. This is the honeycomb stick. This is one of the um, pre-production models. Um, but I think I am missing a cable here, so some of the buttons don't work. Happy anniversary. So I need to get that sorted out, um, which I will do. I had a chat with them at Honeycomb. Martin Light, thank you for four months. Easy decision to make. You're welcome. Thank you, Martin. Uh, Mad Mad Dog, Mad Dog, forty three. Welcome to the house, Mad Dog. Uh, James seven eight nine. Thank you for thirty two months. Is this my summer car? Lol. <laughs> You'll have to have a word with Mrs. Squirrel if you want a Halloween bake off. Nothing to do with me. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah. So everything was fine. Like, you know, we 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 drunk we drunk cider. You know, well, I drunk cider. Till past midnight. That was expected. It would have been fine, but then the fire alarm went off at 3 a.m. The worst fire alarm you have ever heard went off at 3 a.m. It was absolutely horrendous. And it was deliberately set off, in my opinion, because it was set off, the fire brigade say, it was set off by deodorant. Now you tell me, of all the sensors in that building, in every single room, that are used to deodorant being sprayed every single day by people, how does a fire alarm sensor go off at 3 a.m. because of excess deodorant? It just, just it doesn't stack up, does it? Not really. It stacks of. That's what it stacks up. So either somebody woke up at 3am and figured that they smelt really bad and they should use an entire can of deodorant in a small room with a sensor, or somebody did it for a laugh. So we were all outside 3am this morning, waiting for the fire brigade to turn up, which they eventually did. And then went inside and tried to find a fire that wasn't there. Happy 
and we waited a little bit longer and then another fire engine turned up and we waited even longer and then at something like quarter to four in the morning we all staggered back inside and of course you can't just go straight back to sleep you sort of lying there thinking oh my god so yeah when i woke up this morning i was pretty wrecked as was everybody else <laughs> Um, I got dressed, some people didn't. Some people went out in their pyjamas. <laughs> I got dressed and put my coat on. <laughs> welcome Gary the L, welcome back. Uh, Maxwell, thank you for 45. Kovok Dion, thank you for three months. Pepsi Fever, happy anniversary, Golden Acorn, Pepsi, thank you. So yeah, that would have been fine. So uh, I, I finished my breakfast and I went back to bed for an hour because I was in no state to drive. <laughs> So I went back to bed and then drove three hours and then fell asleep on the sofa. And that's the reason why I didn't start at two o'clock. So you can blame the man with the deodorant. Fierce Wolf, thank you for 10 months. And Joe Baker, thank you for 46. And Alpha Simon, thank you for eight. Alpine Simon, I should say. You don't think it's funny wasting any of service? Neither do I. Neither do I. But, you know, what can you do when there are people in the world that think it's funny? I just wish we could pin it down to the person who did it and then all of us outside of the hotel could have just been let loose on this guy. <laughs> it was good. It was a waste of good deodorant. I mean, it might have been right, God. You don't know. It could have been Dove. I mean, it could have been a cheap Tesco brand. It did the job. Well, I'm sure they have CCTV, but not in everybody's room or wherever the sensor was set off. I don't know. I mean, fire alarms tend to have, like, sectors, don't they? And they can tell you that it was set off in a sector, but maybe not a room. I don't know. I mean, if I was going to do that, I'd probably just spray it on one in the corridor, you know? I wouldn't, like, do it in my room. That would be stupid, wouldn't it? Happy anniversary, Nata. Lynx is best. You find the guy who smells most of deodorant. I don't think he sprayed it on himself. I think he probably sprayed it on the sensor. Jappymon, thank you for 31 months. Papa Reagan, thank you for 44. <coughs> Blue Army Bullseye, mate. Thank you for 50 months. But other than that, Cosford was really good. Like We, we had a great time at Cosford this year. I even won a Dead Stick t-shirt. <laughs> How much sleep did I get? From about 1 a.m. till 3, and then 4 a.m. till 7.30, I think. Something like that. It was not good sleep. Happy anniversary, Nutter. Oh, yeah, yeah, How was yeah. Dead Stick? Well, to everybody's surprise, he's, he's added multiplayer into Dead Stick. So he had four machines, and they were basically paired up into twos. So me and Somi... We're basically like flying together around the Alaskan, like bush, like just in formation flying. It was it was great fun, and apparently Dead Stick. I asked him, I asked Chris about what how we'd done it. Like, had he is one is one PC hosting it, and he said no, it's all done in the cloud. Uh, he said at the moment we're supporting thirty two players, so you you and thirty two mates can fly around Alaska in Dead Stick in one of these bush planes and have a right laugh. <laughs> That sounds great. But yeah, it's coming on. It's coming on well. I'm looking forward to it. BCS, thank you for 74 months. 7th Blue, 46. Martin Light. On my wedding night, the fire alarm was set off by some spring breakers setting off fireworks in their room. Happy anniversary. Certainly memorable. Wow, that's stupid. Nope, we didn't get a free drink. To be honest, when they opened the door, I just, I, I literally walked straight to my room. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Military Nata. Vet Gamer, thank you for two months. Um, so yeah, I, I have done, basically, I've not had a chance to do any preparation for Sunday Night Trucking. So what I thought we'd do is we'd do some of this, um, um, what's it called, Pink Ribbon event thing. Happy anniversary. So Nata. I should be good to last, what's this, four hours? <laughs> I could probably stream for four hours and then I might fall asleep on the wheel. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll pick up some jobs and go and take some trailers and uh, and chat about Cosford and what I saw and that kind of thing. Happy anniversary. Coffee's needed, dude. 
I may need caffeine later. Copper motor, thank you for ten. Uh, so I'm not proposing to configure a truck. We'll just we'll just take some some uh, some trailers around, uh, do a few pink ribbons, and then see how it goes. Maybe I'll buy a trailer later or something. No preparation. I oh, know, right? <laughs> Did you tour Nimbus as well? No, no. Um, I spent a lot of time with Deadstick. I spent a lot of time with uh, Honeycomb. I spent a lot of time with Fulcrum. Uh, and then basically bounced around various other stands. Uh, watched, I watched the Laminar Research update on X-Plane. I watched uh, the Honeycomb presentation. Uh, I watched... What was the other one I watched? Happy anniversary. Orbex was the other one I watched. The Orbex uh, presentation, which was packed. Yeah, it was, it was the best part of an hour, Chris. Because you've got to wait for the fire engine to turn up. They have to go around. They have to clear the alarm. Like, this is a procedure that they have to go through. It is what it is, I'm afraid. I think that's the second time in my life I've been woken up in a hotel to a fire alarm. Angel Dina, thank you for three years. Uh, well, you don't get the pink ribbon. Get the trailers, Mutley. I've got the... I don't have a skin for this truck, and I don't want to reconfigure a truck today, Mutley. So I'm just going to use the trailers. And I'll be honest, there's only like two skins anyway, isn't there? One's pink with a ribbon, the other one's pink uh, with a ribbon. Uh, you know. Mr. Chew, how you doing, sir? Long time no see. <laughs> Mr. Chew was at Cosford. I was just telling him about the... Uh, the deodorant incident. Mr. Chew. David C, thank you for 35. Why did I think there was no Sunday night trucking this week? I don't know. Thanks for three months, Connor. Camera, welcome back. Welcome back. My character feels a bit high up here. Wow, that's actually quite low down. Just feels weird. I'm not really sure. Oh, you're still at the hotel. Blimey. Turn right. Are you hoping for another, another uh, fire Turn alarm right. evening? Are you staying another night then? Blimey. Is that guy that had the fire extinguisher, is he still walking around outside? Because if he is, I wouldn't stay there tonight. <laughs> Maybe Mr. Chew's a deodorant guy. That's it. Happy Mapex. Five years, Mapex. Happy anniversary. A very happy nutter. Thank you. Dan Hall. Thanks for 14. As a flight attendant, you'd be surprised how many times a fire alarm has woken me up in a hotel. I suppose if you if it's if it's you're staying in that regularly, I suppose it becomes more regular, right? But how many times was it because of deodorants? I wonder. Yeah, let's get the wheel. Come on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome back. You're going home tomorrow. Fair enough. Mr. Jens, thank you for 14. Happy Where are we going here? Keep left. Then turn left. Fatma, welcome back. SF Giants, welcome back. Thank you for the delivery, uh, SF left. Giant. Appreciate the support, sir. Thank you. Are we going in here? You have arrived. Uh, I'm going to guess we have to reverse maybe the guy with the exhibitor was an ex exhibitor at cost was he really what was he exhibiting then near the full size a320 cockpit that's interesting never because of deodorant interesting it was I'm, I'm almost certain it was deliberate Where are we in the game? We are in Port Angeles. 
so I have a question. Guys, did you see my video on Microsoft Flight Simulator? I know it was a few days late. A lot of people put theirs out on Monday. But I couldn't get mine done for Monday because I had the VR 180 stuff to do. So I just wondered, because obviously we can talk about Microsoft Flight Sim now. What were your thoughts about it? Looks like a lot of you did watch it. That's cool. Thank you. Looks awesome. It does, doesn't it? It does look very, uh, it does look very, very promising. I was, uh, I was quite surprised, if I'm honest with you. Because I was kind of preparing myself for the worst, you know? <laughs> Preparing, from, preparing to fall off the hype train is what I was ready for. Can't wait to play it. I can't wait to play it. The public beta. Well, there's a... So the first stage is a, uh, a private technical alpha, which you can apply for. It, effectively, like a part of the testing. But you won't be able to show anything, any footage or anything. So that's the first thing you can do, is try and get on the technical test. Um, after that, I think they then move on to more of an open test. No, there's no system requirements at the moment. They literally don't know what the requirements are. Navigation See, resumed. There's, there's two things, right? Number one, all of the code is unoptimized, right? So you can't figure out what your requirements are if your code's not been optimized properly. So the, we're, we're a few months away from that yet. Um, and the second thing is, they want to do this technical test because they want as many kinds of different machines as possible so that they can figure out what's going to be the minimum and the recommended requirements. So you're probably, you know, four months away maybe from actually knowing what the requirements are. Has it got squeaky windows? I actually don't know. I actually don't know the answer to that. Jen's like 14. One month at uni. Nice. Settling in. Uh, Ken Barlow, 31. Thanks for the quality content. The vid was was boss. Thank you. There's a lot of effort, that video. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of effort. But I wanted to try and put something together that was, um, you know, worthy of, the, of, of what I'd seen. Uh, James, you're, you're just pulling numbers out of your pockets, shall we say, because we have absolutely no idea what the price point will be. Turn left. Absolutely none. Keep right. But let me put it, let me put this to you, right? Orbex Orbex True Earth England is split into three parts, right? If you was to buy Orbex True Earth England, South, Middle and North that cost you, what, well over £100, I think. Something like that. And that's Continue just... Straight. That's just England. Flight, the Microsoft Flight Simulator gives you that kind of fidelity out of the box. So even if they charged 100 quid, <laughs> which I doubt they would, you're still saving money. Uh, do you happen to have McTrine's phone number? I don't know. No, I, I don't know. I don't have any contact details from him at all. The last time I saw him was at 3 a.m. this morning. He wasn't there at breakfast. Maybe it's going to be a monthly fee. I think that question was put to them. Is it going to be subscription based? And they were like, nope. So I'm like, why are you going to make your money? <laughs> I honestly don't know how it's going to work. Maybe you need to have like an Xbox Game Pass or something. Maybe they'll split the scenery up into sectors so that, you know, you buy Europe, you buy America. I don't know. I just don't know how it's going to work.
Where's the one hour config? I haven't got anything prepared so we can't do config. So instead we're delivering this pink ribbon stuff. I, I agree, subscription base would make the most sense. Like, let's face it, I, I can't see it. I can't see it ever being the case where you spend, let's say, I don't know, fifty pounds on, on the sim, and then you can just stream stuff from the Azure platform for the next five years for no fee. I can't see that happening. Like running running that kind of technology in the cloud is gonna cost them a lot of money. So there's got to be some element of annual fee, you know? Even if it's like every year you have to spend 50 pounds on it i don't know there's got to be something i can't see it being a one-off fee forever it should cost them nothing if they own the data no come on white then how many how much bandwidth are they going to stream to thousands and thousands of thousands of machines right. How much bandwidth? That all costs money. What about the data storage? What about the data centers? What about the power? It all costs money. It's got to come from... Money's got to come in from somewhere. Mr. Hambone, thank you, 35. If they've got cloud-based technology, which they obviously have, I'm kind of thinking that they're going to add multiplayer to it. They've got to be able to add that. Like with the original FSX, you had that kind of game spy that you could install, and that would give you multiplayer aspects. I'm thinking out of the box, this thing's got to have some cloud based multiplayer, which would be kind of cool. Do you think the IRL pilots will use the simulator for experience? A hundred percent, Osley. A hundred percent they will. And if you went to um, Honeycomb's talk, He's basically speaking with the FAA and he's trying to get simulator time added into the PPL curriculum so that you can basically dramatically cut, cut your um, dramatically cut how long it takes you to get a PPL and how much it costs to get a PPL by offloading a lot of stuff onto a sim. It makes a lot of sense. John E, thank you for 27. Uh, Double J, thank you for three months. Uh, Dragon Trucker, I'm back. Long story, the whole town burned down, lost everything, ruined building life, Continue missed being straight. here. What? Oh my god, Dragon Trucker. The whole town burned down. I would say that's the short story, Dragon Trucker. We need to hear the long version. Um, yeah, I think so, Wyland. I mean, there are FAA-approved uh, simulators, but I, I get where you're coming from, yeah. Devil Dude! Thank you for dropping uh, five subs on the chat. Devil Dude, appreciate the support. Don't forget to give him a thank you if you, uh, if you get a free sub. Yeah, I, 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 I'm all for that, Mr. Chu. I'm all for FAA-approved stuff. I mean, Virtual Fly, all their stuff is FAA-approved. Well, a lot of it is. Honeycomb stuff is not FAA-approved, but they'd have to go through the process to get that. Will this sim be good enough for train pilots? Do you know what? Do you know what, Dale Strange? When I came away from that event and I was thinking about the fact that Microsoft have got the world data and it's all in the cloud and they can stream it, I was thinking to myself, they're not just going to restrict this to flight simulation. Like, what else are they going to do with this technology? They've got to do other things with it. It makes sense to, to take all of that data, like actual real-world data, and do something else with it. And I'm thinking, could they, could they get train simulators in there? Could they get truck simulators in there? I don't know. It's going to be very, very interesting to see what they do. But there's no way they're only going to run a flight sim on it. I'm not sure about a racing sim. Unless it was like, you know, one of those arcadey ones, like the. Is it Need for Speed? The one where you can drive across continents and stuff. 
Well, a train sim would work pretty well, I reckon, because it wouldn't be hard for them to pick up. Like, the same technology they use to figure out where all the trees are from satellite images, it wouldn't be that hard to figure out where all the train tracks are. And then they could do some pretty cool stuff. Was it the crew? That was it, yeah. What is this sat nav doing? Why are we going on a crazy loop? Wow, there's no actual... Look at that. What's all that about? There's no actual link road. You have to go around some weird loop and come back. That's really bizarre. Keep right. Then take the exit on the right. So yeah, I don't know. After flight sim, we'll see. Take the exit on the right. I, I can easily see them taking this technology and putting it into other titles. In 50 meters. Turn left. Turn left. Wackaday, it was great to meet you, sir. Great to meet you. Mr. Wackaday right. was at the, uh... Whoa, 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 Mr. Wackaday was at Cosford yesterday. I think I just finished my chips and sausage and he came over. <laughs> Bio, biohazard, welcome back. It'd be a waste if they didn't do different things. I, I can almost guarantee they will. This is the weirdest junction. No, so uh, two persons in the same cockpit VR. So there's two things. One, they're fully aware of VR, and they want to do VR, but for the initial release, the, there will not be a VR option. The second thing is, for like shared cockpits, they're fully aware of that too, but they're not making any promises for release. Keep left. Like, they're in this position now where they have to make a decision about what they try to put in the initial release and what they save post-release, you know? And so VR is, is not going to make the cuts. Shared cockpit? Don't know. It really depends how well development goes. Steve! Walk back. Yeah, there is a danger of feature creep, absolutely. But the guy who's, like, in charge of the project, if you saw any of the Q&A panel videos, he was the guy on the right. That guy's, like, in charge of the, of the product at Microsoft, and he's a really... He's got his feet on the ground, that guy. Like, he was, he was asked a question about, you know, uh, loot crate type technology in the, in the sim, and he was like, no. Nah. He said, you know, I don't want loot crates, you don't want loot crates, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so, he's, he's basically wants to make, in his words, he wants to make a sim that satisfies the real passionate flight simmers, the hardcore flight simmers. He wants to make a sim that satisfies them first and then he will sort of simplify it for more kind of um, you know people who don't want like a full-on experience they want to sort of dumb it down a little bit he'll do that later but he wants to satisfy the the hardcore flight summer first and foremost well i don't think it's going to be a game red devil i think it's most certainly going to be a sim most certain like the technology in this thing it's not a game Slow down. Speeding. Yeah, well, it, it was a Q&A panel, England, so they, they were the questions he was being asked. Are you going to have subscriptions? Are you going to have loot crates? You know, surprise mechanics. <laughs> Whoa. Cheese breaks. L. Phillips. Uh, I feel like the fire alarm guy may have been so excited about the show that he wanted to wake up all the hotel guests. Or it could be that the hotel's new wake-up call service. I have never heard a fire alarm like that before. You know, like most fire alarms are some kind of, you know, they're like a noise that alternates, like beep, 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 some kind of like, you know, like that. The fire alarm sound was a single, loud, continuous note. So it was just, bah! 
like, like that, just constantly. That was the fire alarm. So at 3 a.m., when, when this thing went off, and you, you're so startled, so tired, and you're looking around like, what the heck is that? Have I left something on? I, I picked up my phone. It's not my phone. I looked around. I saw my like the pap, like stuff plugged right. in. I Dead. turned it all off. Right. The sound was still there. My brain's starting to wake up. Um, I think we're going in here, aren't we? We're going in here. I think so. Turn right. So at this point, my brain's starting to wake up. I'm looking around, thinking, "What on oh, earth is yeah. this noise?" And then, eventually, I sort of looked around and realised it must be the fire alarm. Oh boy. I think we've gone the wrong way. It must be the fire alarm, it can't be anything else. But the fire alarm sensor wasn't flashing. At all. Which is even more confusing. Yeah, I mean, Mr. Chu did exactly the same thing. Like, everybody's... A lot of people said the same. They were, they, they were woken up and just tried, you know, they started checking their equipment because they thought it was them. They thought it was some, one of their devices that was making the noise. A lot wobbly. Who's the guy standing next to the vending machines? Has he got a bottle of deodorant in his hand? <laughs> so, yeah, that was not what I wanted at 3 o'clock. Oh man, why are we having to turn this around? What a scumbag. Come on, Truck I.O., what are you doing? There we go. You never understood the point of spraying deodorant. It's to stop you smelling of sweat. That's what it is. It's, it's basically like an antiperspirant or a, or a smelly to stop you stinking. It's more of a social thing than anything else. Use a roll on. Well, does that, I mean, if you want to like put it, I don't know, on your back or on your chest, like whatever you want to put, like using a roll on is only practical in certain places. Other places, you're better off spraying it, aren't you? Mr. Langevel, how are you doing, sir? Mr. Langevel, you completely missed the fire alarm at 3 a.m. Mr. Mub, thank you for 39 months. Um, PC Tech, I will admit I was a bit skeptical of the new Microsoft Flight Simulator. Just to be clear, PC Tech, it's not called Flight Sim 2020. I just want to, I've seen a lot of people calling it that. It's not called that. It's called Microsoft Flight Simulator. There's no 2020 in the title. I think people are putting it there because it's coming out next year and they want to distinguish it from FSX. I get that. But just to be clear, there's no 2020 in the name. Uh, but after watching your video and others, I am much more optimistic. They seem, uh, they really seem all in on this platform. Yes, I agree. Cherryhead, welcome back. Can a country say no to Microsoft for using the land view in the game? I don't believe so. However, I mean, they're bound to remove military sensitive areas, you know? That, like, you're not going to see that on Google Maps either. There will be things that they blur out. <laughs> I don't know, somebody was posting a comment saying, oh, you know, some countries... I think he was saying, some countries have a law against you publishing the an image of their house without permission and he was like well i've not given permission for my house to be published so microsoft you know i'm gonna have to sue them ha 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 <laughs> i don't know how all that works i don't know if they need to get permission from the country or from all the houses i don't know 
Well, I know, like, I don't know if it's Germany or not, why then. I know in France, you can't take a picture in public of a monument or something like this with other people in it. It's against the law. You have to get permission. But everybody does it. Job market. Let's see if we've got anything here. Pink ribbon. 23. Aberdeen to Portland. Do these jobs have to be a certain length? I think you can't make photographs of the Eiffel Tower at night. No, 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 it's way more restrictive than that. Do you know what, I'm the Viking? There, there's a whole bunch of comments on, on my video um, about Area 51. But not, like, people aren't saying, oh, will I be able to fly over Area 51? Like, there are literally comments saying, does that mean I can go and crash into Area 51 now? Ha 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 ha. What? Some other guy posted, um, what was it now? He said, yeah, but what are the crash physics and explosion um, textures like? These are the really important questions. To which I replied, not to a pilot. <laughs> it's like, it's just mind blowing. <clears throat> I mean, Area 51, like, I don't know what it's like in real life, but... Everything I've ever seen of it, it's in DCS and it's like a massive runway in some buildings because most of it is probably underground anyway. Now you can take a picture in France, but you have to have the picture taken away. You don't recognize the person's in it. That's it. That's it. You can't. Yeah, you can take a picture, but anybody else in the photograph, you have to effectively blur out if it's possible to recognize them because you need their permission to take the photograph. But I'm sure, Mr. Tudor, there's something around taking pictures of monuments as well. I'm not sure. <laughs> 